From Galaga to Gal Gadot, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else. That is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Brennan Lee Mulligan. And my axe. And Ryan Martin. And his axe. And also Jackie Cation. And their axes. Oh, what? what? Three, what? One, one axe all around. One axe, we're just sharing it, we're sharing it. This feels like you all went together on a birthday gift. That, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm like, like, my axe. Like, oh yeah, also, yeah, I'm a yeah. part of that axe as well. Put my name on the card. Card, yeah. <laughs> You're all a repeat guests, so you kind of know how this works. But we'll go through it real quickly for the viewers at home. This is, um, actually, I've got false statements here. It's up to you to correct me. You just have to correct me with, um, actually, before anything you say. If you don't say, um, actually, I won't give you the point. And you can correct me at any point. Once you hear the thing that's wrong, just jump right in there. So, let's get started. Hell yeah. In Jules Verne's novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a tour of the underwater world, readers meet Captain Nemo, who lives a secretive life 20,000 leagues below sea level in his advanced submarine. Yes, Brennan. Um, actually, 20,000 <laughs> leagues. <laughs> let's put it down. All right, yeah, lay it on me. Uh, I don't know how many leagues below sea level Captain Nemo lived because leagues are a measurement of distance. Fathoms are a measurement of depth. Mmm. <gasps> you, uh, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna give it to you. You're, 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 you're. Get in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, you can measure depth, uh, depth in leagues. Um, you're close to what we're going for, but uh, that, that's the specifics of it are not, not right not there. Correct? They're not okay. correct. The, it's not, it's not fathoms versus leagues. It's the, uh, that's at issue here. No. Okay. Okay. I, I know I've already buzzed in. But <laughs> yes, I, you have, yeah, Brennan. But I think I. I'm, I think I'm right. Uh, <laughs> well, clearly you think you're right. Yeah, but I think it hard. Uh, okay. Uh, so th this statement, he lives 20,000 leagues below mm -hmm. sea level. If there's not a comma, the, because leagues are a measurement of distance. So the, the degree to which he lives under sea level wouldn't be a matter of leagues, right? Am no, I... well, you could live for in the mile-high city, even though miles are, are a measure of distance. You can measure distance in, in any dimension you want. That's, that's not, in fact, at, at fault here. Okay. Yes, Jackie. Um, actually. Yes. I think that he doesn't live under the sea. He's an explorer under the sea. Uh, he is an explorer under the sea, but he but he does in fact live there as well. He's sort of an outcast from from society. Yes, yes. Ryan, I am wrong. It's twenty thousand parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> In eleven seconds. Uh, no, no, that's mm. not it either. Mm. Uh, um, uh, uh, Brennan, you were close. You're very close to what it, what it is. Uh, but I'll go ahead and tell you. The title twenty thousand leagues under the sea refers to the distance traveled while they are under the sea. Uh, so, but the issue is not that you can't measure in leagues. Uh, in fact, 20,000 leagues is over six times the diameter of Earth. So they're not 20,000 leagues deep because that is impossible. Uh, they are at most four leagues deep and then traveling 20,000 leagues while under the sea. Ah, oh. A league of their own. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were on the right track that, that it, it, it is an issue of, of depth but not not the like the the nomenclature. Not the nomenclature. Is gotcha. that fair? Do you think that's fair? Do you think that was a fair? Uh... I do. The brand heads are I gonna light your ass up, my <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> just get ready for it, cause they're coming. And uh... I'm just. I think it was we'll super fair. I'm just saying it's a it's a bigger problem that if you tried to get twenty thousand leagues deep, you would punch through the Earth several times over and float mm -hmm. out into space. You know, but here's the thing: is that could very easily happen in a Jules Verne story. <laughs> it's like we only... started out below sea and then we became yeah. a space adventure. <laughs> the only way to break the orbit of the break into orbit is to plunge so deeply into the Earth's <laughs> core that you rocket off the other side. <laughs> please uh, stop! Please stop! Please stop! That sounds like some goofy Jules Verne science to me. I bet he would do. That. Uh, well, no points uh, to anyone for that one, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, moving on to our next question here. Part of Jedi or Sith training includes the hand making of one's own lightsaber. A key component to lithium crystals are found in the crystal caves on the, yes, Brennan. Um, actually, kyber <laughs> crystals are used in the creation of lightsabers. Lithium crystals don't even exist in that setting. That's Star Trek. That is totally correct, yes. yes. Uh, kyber crystals. 
not dilithium crystals, which are Star Trek, which is used for dilithium uh, crystals are a distance of uh, measurement of distance, right? <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, that felt like one where everyone was just itching to get to that button. Brennan just got to it first. Uh, it it feels like. Uh, in sci-fi universes, if someone starts to talk to you about like crystal magic and crystal healing, you should maybe listen a little bit more than an art. Like crystals, like maybe these are magic everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah. In real life, they're magic too. Uh, I don't yeah, know I guess if you guess guys have been to Arkansas. <laughs> I bring it up a lot when I teach improv, uh, which is uh, when you're explaining yourself or you're explaining something goofy, people can only, adults can only ask why once, maybe twice, <laughs> before they're like, whatever, right? Yeah. So it's like, if you have, like in Star Trek, it's like, oh, the ships go faster than the speed of light. And they're like, how? how? And you're like, I don't know, there's fucking crystals. And they're like, great, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. You fully he explained that. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Perfect. Yeah, it's some Two lithium? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Right. That can't be. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, one point for Brennan. Brennan is on the board. And this next one is about video games. While the title of Super Mario Brothers is generally only applied to Mario and Luigi, in 1992, the long-lost brother Wario made his first appearance in the Game Boy Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. It's all one title. Brennan, coming in here again, looking concerned, perplexed, gonna have a guess. Um, actually, Wario is not Mario and Luigi's brother. That's correct. Wario is not wow. Mario and, and Luigi's brother. You would think with a name like Wario, with all the same color, you know, general is he kind a of cousin? like. He is supposed to be Mario's childhood friend, who I guess turned on him at some point. <laughs> I was thinking about it, and the question is phrased in such a way of like, of course Wario is the brother. Of course he's a brother. Look, look at him. But there's no family resemblance. I mean, <laughs> other than, you know what well, I mean? Hold on a second. No family resemblance? I mean, on the scale <laughs> of, listen, Mario and Luigi have the same face, just Mario's a little heavier and Luigi's a little lankier. Wario's got like baggy eyes and a fucking <laughs> lightning bolt mustache. His nose looks like a weird like budding potato. He's he's a he, Wario needs help. <laughs> That's it. It's all nurture with Wario. Yeah. I don't think it was nature. Yeah, I think something that, that happened. Some, there. Something went wrong sometime in his teens. Yeah. He wasn't held enough as a baby. Yeah, <gasps> it does feel. I I love the idea too that Wario was like Wario used to be Mario's friend and then like something happened. It's like you know that happens. It like feels like. Wario, Wario's the kind of person that Mario is like not sure whether to invite to his wedding or not. But I think it's a very postmodern take. It's like a turn for the series because, you know, early Super Mario Brothers, you know, you're fighting Bowser or like in the very mm -hmm. first Mario game ever, he's fighting Donkey Kong, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, the, are the monsters in the world these like turtle dragons or these giant apes throwing barrels? And then Mario comes along and it's like, no, your enemy is a dark reflection of yourself. Yeah. You, what are your demons? You it's know? it's just you with one of your letters flipped upside down. That's the this biggest feels, evil of all. This feels like a breakthrough, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, I think we've really solved some. We've healed some wounds. I who think knew? so. Yeah. Who knew that the existential cry of dread was? <laughs> ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ding ding ding. The ding, next ding. Mario game is just Mario conquering his inner demons, and just, <laughs> like a, a real extended therapy session. Like do 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 do. I guess it all started when. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I cannot say, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> uh, this is about Harry Potter. The common rooms of each Hogwarts house is intended to be accessible only to members of that house. Every one is at least partially concealed and requires a secret password or knock to enter. Brennan, again, swooping in. I am in. sorry. Can... Um, actually, the Ravenclaw room requires a riddle. That's correct. The Ravenclaw room does wow. not require a secret password. It requires a riddle which is dumb, is the <laughs> dumbest thing. This is, this is a ringer here. This is not, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Come in. We'll see, we'll, we, uh, the, we'll, we'll see where we well, trip you no, up. Why do you think that's dumb to have a riddle? I think it's dumb because a riddle, by definition, is less secure than just a word no one else knows. Like, uh, any other, like, it, it's hubris. It's saying, like, we're the smartest house, and only we are smart enough to solve this riddle. Any other dum-dums from any other house will come here and just, <laughs> just stomp their feet and put a bucket on their head and bang it when they can't <laughs> figure out this riddle. It's like, no, someone, you give them a riddle, like, someone could figure that out. And, like, anything else is just, like, do you know the one word I'm thinking of? Like, that's objectively a more secure way 
to keep your room safe. All right, Swift on security. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, listen, you gotta do, like the, the Gry Gryffindor common room, it's like a mix of like uppercase and lowercase. They got one digit, they got a couple special characters in there. Like you're not getting into <laughs> Gryffindor. <laughs> it also just sucks because it means that no Ravenclaw students can like go out to Hogsmeade and get fucking <laughs> blasted and come back drunk on butterbeer and be like, fuck, I gotta get to my bed. Oh, the riddle change. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. What is it? I have three legs. It's the Sphinx one. You're a you're a Sphinx. <laughs> no, I'm not a Sphinx. It's the riddle of the God damn. Yeah, every <laughs> fuck. Every big party weekend, there's just a pile of Ravenclaws outside the common room, and just like yeah, we all couldn't someone. get in. It's like a designated driver. Yeah. It's like I need a designated Riddler. Yeah, someone's yeah. gonna- <laughs> <laughs> You need to stay cogent enough that you can solve right. the riddle so we I can mean, all get back exactly. in. Exactly. All right, well, that's another point for Brennan. And we move on to our very first shiny question. Shiny questions, just like shiny Pokemon, are at the same number of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This game is called A Book By Its Cover. We're gonna show you images of book covers with the titles and authors removed. It'll be up to you to name them. Whoever can name the most will get the point. Let's go ahead, flip those overs. Let's take a look at these books. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Cool, Brennan, tell us what these books are. Okay, Wrinkle in Time. Mm -hmm. Oh. Fahrenheit 451. Shit. The Hobbit. This one in the lower left, I'm unsure about. I don't recognize the cover, but I, looking at it, that could be Tash. Okay. Fighting a Narnian in the last battle. Okay. Uh, for Narnia, but I don't, that also could be very run. That could be a weird okay. bird man fighting a sword guy. <laughs> uh, Ender's Game, The Miss of Avalon. Okay, you got five out of six. Ryan, what are you, what are you looking at here? Uh, I certainly got A Wrinkle in Time. Uh -huh. uh, second one is Don Quixote. <laughs> uh, then The Hobbit. Uh -huh. Uh, and then actually, you couldn't remember that one because it was Don Quixote also. <laughs> uh, second edition of Don I, Quixote, I, I yeah. Miguel Cervantes' famous <laughs> novel, Don Quixote also. <laughs> uh, I knew that one was Ender's Game, but I couldn't remember it in my brain, so it's actually Don Quixote. And the last one <laughs> is also Don Quixote. <laughs> you also got five right, all the Don Quixotes. Yeah. No, you have uh, two correct here, two correct. And Jackie, what are we looking at? Okay, I got Wrinkle in Time. Okay guessed it. That next one I went with Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Does that feel too soon? Uh, the Hobbit, I got. Uh, the next one, I just, I was like, Sandman? There's uh -huh. a dead guy. Uh, I did not get Ender's Game, because I don't think I've ever seen that, the original mm. cover. So I literally uh, guessed incorrectly and said Blade Runner. Okay, I can, then, that's a good guess. I can totally see that, yeah. I, except for that's a spaceship. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Miss of Avalon. Yes. So uh, let's go ahead and let's, let's reveal the correct answers here. I think you've got three correct here, if I'm counting right. right. Yeah, three correct here. Uh, but yes, Wrinkle in Time, Fahrenheit 451, The Hobbit, The Stand, Ender's Game, and Mists of Avalon. Brennan, you got five out of six. That was more than anyone else. One more point this? for Brennan, and you are cleaning Shut up. This out. is. This is not pretty. Not it is pretty, not, not pretty. Good thing I'm not competitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you noticed a few things that we got wrong in our last episode. These are our favorite corrections from you, our picky, picky viewers. Ad Antiochus 1098 says, in the Animorphs question on Um Actually, you gave Tobias's last name as Santarelli. I know that isn't right because that's the name I gave him in the fan fiction series I wrote years ago. Kind of freaking out seeing it up there like that. Yes, Google got the better of us here. One point for you, and I'm gonna say it's canon now. And from our dropout Discord, Jack says, Um, actually, Throg isn't Thor as a frog. Well, he did become a frog thanks to Loki. The title Throg was taken later by a different person turned frog who found a piece of Mjolnir. My deepest apologies for confusing two different Thor-based frogs. T. Lear says, Um, actually, the Wendigo is not specific to just Canada. Its folklore is in parts of America as well. That is correct, although what we said isn't incorrect. At the same time, heaven forbid Canada do something without America making it all about itself. So one point for T. Lear. Brennan, just, just cruising his way down the scoreboard, not looking apologetic about it at all, <laughs> uh, just glaring at the camera. So we'll, we'll move into our next question here. Uh, this is about Superman. 
While most people know that kryptonite is Superman's biggest weakness, not as many people know that kryptonite comes in many different colors with varying effects. Classic green kryptonite weakens Superman, pink makes him permanently lose his superpowers, and periwinkle causes him to lose his inhibitions. Ryan. Um, actually, Superman's real weakness is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Superman and Kathy are the same character. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. uh, the pink, nothing makes him permanently lose his powers. Oh, uh, you, uh, you, you've identified the, the part of the, the, the wrong area here, but there, I think there is a color kryptonite that does, if, well, that is the wrong thing. Right. You know what, whatever, I'll give it to you. That's right, you said a true thing. Right, uh, uh, nothing permanently makes, makes him, him lose his powers. powers. Uh, and pink certainly does not. Pink certainly does not. There does exist a pink kryptonite in the comics, one of the strangest, things in Superman comics, pink kryptonite makes Superman gay. Uh, isn't For that reals? the weirdest? Yeah, um, Brandon, actually, do you have a problem? I'm um, actually, that's offensive. Yes, incredibly. <laughs> I'm actually, that's offensive. <laughs> I know, there's a reason we're talking about this here. Yes. <laughs> um, Wait, how, how do they know that? When uh, Superman is around pink kryptonite, uh, he loses all interest in Lois Lo Lane, he becomes extremely interested in Jimmy Olsen, uh, and then uh, also uh, in some not great sort of stereotypes. He also is very complimentary of Jimmy Olsen, the window treatments that Jimmy Olsen has uh, mm. selected for some things. It sounds like a more of a, like it was written by sort of a Rock Hudson character. Because <laughs> I don't know if you, in all the Rock Hudson movies, there's uh, some reference to him being homosexual and yeah. he insisted on that because he, but it was all caricatures. Mm. None of it was, and you were just like, well, why would you want to sustain those stereotypes except for, I guess embrace whatever is happening in 1957. Yeah. I don't. Uh, so when was this one written? I uh, I do. Uh, let's see if our, our fact checker can find out uh, if you can find any information about um, the pink kryptonite issue and when it was written. So it was 2003. Was it? 2003. 2000. <laughs> Will and Grace was on the air. <laughs> oh my what God. the fuck are you talking about? Wow. I thought you were gonna say 19. Um, actually, that is enormously <laughs> offensive. <laughs> Um, actually, Will and Grace is still on the air. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I think you get uh, it, it. Despite some of the, those like those stereotypes, it does sound like a gay man's fantasy, which mm. is like, this guy's straight, he's super hot, but maybe if he's around alcohol and he kind of <laughs> loosens up, like, you know. You get Superman around some pink kryptonite. And <laughs> what did you say the periwinkle one did? Oh, uh, you want to know about periwinkle kryptonite and how yeah. that's an odd choice of color as well? Periwinkle kryptonite causes him to lose his inhibitions. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Believe it or not, there hasn't been a big superhero movie this year since Birds of Prey came out. That's kind of a big deal for us here at Um Actually because we rely on the releases of these things to keep our questions fresh and delicious for you, the viewers. Luckily, there is a big new superhero movie coming out right now, and that's Wonder Woman 1984. Perfect timing, right? Because I think we could all use just a little bit of escapism right now. Okay, if you're not familiar with this, this is an all new chapter of the Wonder Woman story. Wonder Woman, AKA Diana Prince, is now living quietly among mortals in the 80s. You remember the 80s. This is an era of excess, the pursuit of power, having it all. It's totally different from the last time we saw Wonder Woman, which was during World War One, you know, mud and trenches and Spanish flu. Now fully powered, she maintains a low profile curating artifacts for the Smithsonian and performing acts of superheroism incognito, or as incognito as you can be when you're dressed as an ancient warrior and you have a giant glowing whip. Diana will have to step directly into the spotlight and muster all her wisdom, her courage, her strength in order to battle the cheetah and save mankind from a world of its own making. Proving that she is the hero for all time, for our time, and for everyone. Also, Kristen Wiig is the cheetah. I mean, if you like comedy and nerd shit, which you gotta if you're watching this, what else do you want? The film has a great story peppered with fun and humor and all the intense action sequences that you love from the first movie. It's got hope. It's got heart. Little bit of mystery. Couple of fun surprises. Lots of big action. It's everything you want from a Wonder Woman movie. Just like in the previous Wonder Woman films, there'll be something for everyone to enjoy, but also a lot for the tried and true fans to love. In theaters and on HBO Max at wonderwomanfilm.com starting on December 25th. And it's available on HBO Max in the US only at no extra cost to subscribers. If you already have HBO Max, you can get ready to watch Wonder Woman 1984 whenever you want. Uh, <laughs> All right, that is a point for Jackie. It's a yes, point for Jackie. I'm on the Jackie board. On the board. I'm willing to lose now. <laughs> uh, our next question is about Futurama. The Planet Express employees that we meet in Futurama's first season appear to be a ragtag group of aliens and weirdos, but despite their differences, only Dr. John Zoidberg is from a different planet. 
Ryan. I'm actually... She may not be from there, but I think Amy Wong is from Mars. That's correct. I'm actually, Amy correct. is from Mars. Yes. Yes, yes she is. Nice. So Amy and oh, Dr. John Zoidberg <laughs> are the two, uh, two, two uh, characters from, from a, a planet that is not Earth. Um, and yeah, Zoidberg's first name is John. Uh, also, <laughs> I don't really have much else to add there. Uh, just when I was doing my research, I was like, really? Okay, not what I was expecting. Um, next question. Though it's easy to imagine superheroes living in a world of black and white morality, some well-known superheroes were originally villains, including The Flash, Rogue, and Hawkeye. Jackie. Um, actually, I don't think The Flash was ever a supervillain. That's correct. The Flash was never a villain. Yeah. Uh, Rogue and Hawkeye uh, both, both, how, been... both yes, uh, yeah. appeared as, as villains first. Um, I can't elaborate too much more on that because I don't know a whole lot about comics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the point. It's got to be... I, I don't know a lot about Flash, but yeah. he seems so enormously sincere yeah. that it seemed unlikely that he had ever been <laughs> insincere. A bad bone in <laughs> yes. his body, yeah. Yeah, there's also a clue there in their names because it's really hard because like Rogue and Hawkeye are both like, ooh, they could be bad. Yeah. But being like, there's this guy who's you know terrorizing Central uh, Central City. He's uh, the Flash. <laughs> I'm like that's kind of cool. I'm like, that's a cool name for yeah, the Flash. He's a could be, could, could be, yeah, could be a Flash. Yeah. <laughs> There's this guy, the Flash. You gotta. It's a real, he's a real creep. Get no one that pink kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. This is our second shiny question. A game called Where Am I? Under the couch, you have a stack of maps uh, with the names removed. It's up to you to identify where we are just by looking at the map. All right. Uh, let's take a look at that first map. Where am I? Brennan. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, you are in the land of Oz. That's correct, we are in Oz. Next question. Uh, Jackie. The, we're, we're in the Lord of the Rings or a Hobbit? Uh, no, this is not Lord of the Rings. Wait, 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 keep, keep your maps there. Oh. Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan, you were next. I'm um, actually, we're in the Thousand Acre yes, Woods. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Hundred Acre Woods. Uh, uh, um, actually, we're in the Jackie Hundred Acre Woods. We're in the Hundred Acre Woods. My buzzer's broken. My buzzer's broken. I was optimistic. Right. Okay, and uh, next, next map. Brennan. Um, actually, we are in Westeros. That is correct, next map. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually, this is the fucking thing you talked about at desk at your desk at work a couple weeks ago and I was working on Dimension 20 stuff and it was cool we had a cool conversation you were like there's a place that instead of having a map it has a sentence about it yeah and and if you listen to your friends when they talk to you <laughs> and remember what they say you could win <laughs> that is uh, the, none of the things you said is untrue, uh, but it's not the answer I'm looking for. Uh, does anyone have have a guess on this one? Um, actually, it's uh, Mark Twain being pithy. Uh, no, it is very pithy, though. Uh, Ryan. Um, actually, this sounds like a response you would get if you asked for a map in the Hitchhiker's Guide. No, no, know. but you're you're you are very close. No one will get this one. I'll say, but this is uh, this is Discworld, the very first issue of Color of Magic. Oh. Terry Pratchett did not include uh, a map. He just included a little forward that included this sentence. Uh, in later editions, they eventually added a map. Uh, but this, uh, yeah, a little tricky one there. Let's move on. Where are we? Brennan. Um, actually, this is Hyrule. This is Hyrule from Legend of Zelda. One more map. Uh, this is Ryan. Um, actually, this is a map of Disneyland. Yes. Uh, that's correct. This is just Disneyland. This is a place that it's actually awesome. exists, but it is the most magical place on Earth. Uh, the happiest <laughs> place on Earth. Uh, so that was three for Brennan, two for Ryan, one for Jackie. I'd like to make a... Uh, uh, um, actually, is this Disney actually, World instead of Disneyland? Um, actually, this is Disneyland, but there is, a, there is a map from this stack that's also in here in Critter Country. You can go to Hundred Acre Wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. I don't mind that. Ryan in front of a giant screen. Enhance. <laughs> yeah. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> I should get a point for that as well. Yes. Um, uh, I will not. Uh, <laughs> no, but that's fine. I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. No, I understand completely. You know, I get it. You can meet Rabbit. You can meet Pooh. <laughs> I, you can meet Tigger. It's a lot of fun. I love the idea of a high octane version of, of the Thousand Acre Wood. <laughs> thousand <laughs> acres. More poo. More pig. <laughs> All the poo you can handle. <laughs> Woo! Uh, well, once again, uh, Brennan has snuck away with a point uh, there for where am I? Um, only one stumper in there, which was admittedly intended to be a stumper. Uh, so good job. Well, fuck us, right? We make mistakes. 
If you notice something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at um Actually Show. We might even give you a point, feature your tweet in the next episode. Moving on. It's about Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons, character classes have changed from edition to edition. While some have been present since first edition, like monks, mages, and bards, others were added in later editions, like sort, yes, Brennan. Um, actually, the wording of the question is such, I'm, I, this is gonna be another League's Fathom situation. <laughs> um, actually, mages are no longer present, so they haven't been present in every edition. That's correct. That is what I'm going for, yes. Wow. Uh, mages uh, only exist actually in the second edition. Mm -hmm. uh, and I included this question largely so I can share this fun little fact that in 1994 there was a book called uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, Book Encyclopedia Magica, Volume 1. And uh, at some point in the development process, they decided to change mages to wizards. And they clearly just did a little find replace uh, and just did just like find mage, replace with wizard, which worked for the most part. But in that book, anytime they refer to damage, it's listed as the wizard uh, because mage got replaced by wizard, uh, which is, uh, I think, as writers, we could all sympathize with that having done that before. And good to know that professionals do it as well. <laughs> That's so fun. Does the That's word awesome. image never appear in that book? Is that would become iWizard, which that sounds like a very cool <laughs> Apple product. Yes. Uh, um, Finally, the Apple product we want. Yeah, yeah iWizard, thank you. Give us an iWizard, it literally, it literally is magic. Ooh, this wizard is sleek, <laughs> easy to handle, very good UI on this wizard, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Um, they say it's intuitive, but I don't believe them. <laughs> is there like a good connotative reason for for swapping out like mage and wizard? Because to me, it sort of sounds like the difference between like a bartender and a mixologist, where it's like you're doing the same thing. It's one of you is a little little more highfalutin. So instead of being funny, I will actually please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 so they actually kept the name mage, so that uh, so wizard became a class that allowed you to be necromancer, conjurer, invoker, transmuter, diviner, illusionist. Uh, uh, enchanter or transmuter, uh, but if you were made a specialist, the term mage was used to refer to a non-specialized wizard. Got it. Uh, in second edition. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. And it will get you no <laughs> additional <laughs> points. <laughs> Only in the comments! Um, that's my new catchphrase but on the show. In the <laughs> Your army of, army of internet. <laughs> in the comments! <laughs> um, here we go. In the novel American Gods by Neil Gaiman, the god Odin has two ravens, Hugin and Munin, or thought and memory. When the protagonist Shadow finds himself alone with one of these ravens for the first time, it charmingly says to him, nevermore, as a reference to the Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven. Jackie. Um, actually, it does not say nevermore. He says nevermore, and it gets mad. Uh, you are close enough that I'll give it to you. Like, okay. you you're, you're right. I, I, there is like a little bit more of a specific that I was, yeah. I, I was like, oh, she's gonna get it totally. You got it right. He do, the raven doesn't say nevermore. Shadow tries to get the raven to say nevermore. Instead, the raven says, fuck you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, because that bird's a real jerk. That bird wants no part of Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> and, and being stereotyped as the, yeah. as the raven I, from that. We're not all the same raven. Like, we have our own, like, things going on. You can't just, like... We're not all dragons. Dracula's Deadpool, <laughs> we're not all Draculas, we're vampires. <laughs> it's fun to imagine Odin as like a bird guy. You know, like. Uh, He's got like five animals with him at all times because he has Hugin and Munin, Frecky and Gary are his two wolves, and Slepnir is his horse. And that horse has eight legs, so that's almost two horses <laughs> for the horse. It's yeah. a lot of horse. Yeah, like. It does feel like the kind of like like Odin's house stinks for sure. <laughs> like you go over there and it's like very cool. Yeah, I can see you love your animals a lot. It's like you gotta you gotta clean this up a little be, bit. Yeah, yeah. not only come in. Yeah. yeah, it not only stinks because it's got those five animals. It also has the soul of every fallen warrior in it, <laughs> uh, constantly fighting and drinking. So it's. It smells gross. like beer. A, yeah. It smells like beer. It smells like stale beer. It's definitely a frat house in there, you know? Like, it's just like animals running wild and, and, and drink everywhere. Mead stuck, like a sticky mead floor. It's like, this sucks. <laughs> I bet he does fix it one day. It's like, oh, I forgot an elephant with a broom and I could <laughs> get it to clean. <laughs> uh, well, that's a point for Jackie. And this is our final shiny question of the game. This is a game called Spelling Bee. Now, spelling in English is hard enough, but spelling in fantasy is damn near impossible with apostrophes and hyphens and all kinds of crazy characters. I'm gonna give you a word from sci-fi or fantasy. First person to spell it correctly will get the point. Your word is Oliphant. 
Uh, I'm actually, Oliphant is spelled O-L-I-P-H-A-U-N-T. Brennan, that's correct. <laughs> that is how you spell Oliphant, not elephant, uh, the completely different animal from Middle Earth, the Oliphant. Uh, that's correct. Uh, Oliphant, not actually the correct word for those. That's a hobbit, uh, a hobbit word for them. I think Mameluke? Is the name in Harad? <laughs> well, I didn't ask you to spell Mama Luke, Brennan. M A M A L U K. You know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds like a real hot, like RuPaul drags race. To... <laughs> <laughs> mm, this is my Mama Luke. <laughs> you know? Or he's a little large dog. Marmaduke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marmaduke. Yeah. Like the Battle of Helenor Fields and the, the boom. <laughs> like, oh my God, those elephants look incredible. <laughs> <laughs> look. Yeah, we'll look Oh, oh, no! no. Oh, no, Brendan, we've heard from our fact checkers that um, actually, it's a Moomakeel. <laughs> <laughs> you I idiot. You dumb piece of shit. <laughs> I didn't like blood and drag culture at all. <laughs> <laughs> Get that out of here. Kill, uh, maybe you could, uh, honestly, hey, with that mama look, you can Moomakeel, you know? <laughs> hey. This is our last question of the game. Points as they stand now are seven for Brendan, one for Ryan, three for Jackie. I mean, it's a done game at this point, but we can at least have the satisfaction of knowing this last question because, as always, the last question concerns real-life skills. These are just important things to know. Uh, it doesn't matter if you know how to spell Oliphant or uh, all the different subclasses of Mage. Uh, what's important here is the real world, and now we'll ask this question. Nope, nope. Get at Brennan in the comments. <laughs> For health and eco-conscious consumers, it's important to buy chicken that was raised without added hormones. The only way to be sure that you're buying chicken raised without hormones is to carefully inspect the label for a no added hormones disclaimer. Brennan. Um, actually, you can eat hormones. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You'll, fi you'll be fine. Don't worry about um, it. Uh, Dad, stop. Uh, <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> Come All on, salt Dad. is the same. No, That's not, not. Uh, that is not what I'm going for. I can't fault you your opinion. But if you were the kind of person who were looking to avoid hormones, that might not be what you're looking to hear. Jackie. Um, actually, you have to look for a non-GMO sticker. Mm, no, that's incorrect. Nope. Um, actually, the only way to know if there are hormones is to taste the chicken. Which is, of course, too late by that point, but at least you'll know. But at least, yeah, you'll, you'll, it's like, mm, nope, I'm getting, I'm getting hints of hormone in there. No, that is, is incorrect. Jackie. Oh, um, actually, I think that the best way is what you want is a scrawny chicken, because hormone chickens are super swole. Mm, uh, I like where you're going, but that is not what I'm looking for. That is not the, the, Brennan, yes. Um, actually, hormones are naturally occurring in trace amounts in all organisms, and therefore you cannot get hormone-free chicken because it will be somewhere present in the creature. Now, that is technically correct, but I did specify- Technically! I did specify- <laughs> Correct. I did specify no added hormones, oh, because added. that, that is, uh, it is true that you can Do cannot... not the glands of the body add <laughs> hormones? <laughs> I believe it was Shakespeare who once said. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, listen, I'm not going to give you the point, but it, you, you, you can have, even if you had the point, what are you going to do? You're just going to... Win more? Like, win more? That's, Come on. Uh, here's, yes! Here's what I'm going for here. Uh, it, um, actually, it's illegal in the U.S. to add hormones to poultry. So, in fact, every chicken uh, in, that is sold in the U.S. has no hormones added. Oh. If you see a chicken that advertises itself as no, ho no hormones added, it means that they have nothing else to brag about. And they're, they're just looking for something to try to impress you the consumer. So just know, no chicken sold in the U.S. has hormones added. Like a, like a gluten-free lettuce. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. It's like gluten-free, it's like, yeah, well, yeah, it's true you're gluten-free, but the whole lettuce is gluten-free. What are you doing? What are you trying to pull? Um, and that's our game. Final score here, seven for Brennan, one for Ryan, three for Jackie, and that makes Brennan our winner for this episode. Congratulations, Brennan. Very fun. I, now I gotta look up what Mama Luke is. Because <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's gonna be. I think Jackie's right. I think it's a large Great Dane. I think it's a demonic version of Marmaduke. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mama Luke, you've opened a portal to hell again. Hmm, looks like it's the Arabic word for slaves. <laughs> oh, that's uh, All right. All right. Hey, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.